Welcome, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Anime on Draft. This is your host for this week, Alec. I'm joined here by my two co-hosts, Rolando. What's up? And Drew. What's going on? So today, hold on to your butts, because we're going to have a real whirlwind of an episode, because we have all the premieres, well, not all of them, most of the premieres that we could watch for watch for the new season, as well as the finales of last season. Um, so let's just get straight into it. So let's start with the beer. It's called Down to Earth Session IPA by 21st Amendment Brewery, picked by Drew. Um, it's an IPA, so... I was not too excited when I heard about it, but uh, Drew, why'd you pick this beer? I picked it. Um, I've seen this uh, this brewery like around. Uh, their main marketing strategy is to have cool logos and things on their beer. I was watching actually like a like a little bit of background on them. They had just like generic cans and generic marketing, and their beer wasn't selling very well. And then they decided to like switch it up and make cool pictures and stuff on their beer to make it more marketable. And uh, I'd say it worked. That was one of the reasons why I picked it. I mean, the thing, the can has a monkey in a spacesuit lounging in a hammock on a beach. You mean Winston? Um, so, I mean, kind of. <laughs> I mean, Winston. No, no glasses. So maybe it's a Hammond. Um, you know, who knows? No, it's Winston in rage mode because Winston takes off his glasses. <laughs> takes off his glasses. Uh, yeah. I got it. Well, he doesn't look uh, enraged. He's kind of relaxing on the beach. Um, I mean, it's, it's a cool can. Uh, the beer isn't good. I'm just going to go ahead and throw <laughs> that out there to begin with. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I've seen it before. I'm like, yeah, you know, we'll give it a try. It's an IPA. Um, could be good. And you love um, them. I do. I, I enjoy them. Um, the first thing <laughs> I noticed about this is that it smells good. Yeah, that's when I was pouring it. The smell is actually really good. It's got that typical floral IPA smell, mm-hmm. and it just smells delicious. Um, the color is nice as well. It's yeah. appealing, and it keeps the head for a while, which was nice. Yeah, you get a got, solid you amount. Got nice and it legs. Sticks around. Nice legs mm-hmm. as well. Nice um, legs. So I mean, you know, brewed, brewed well. Just the for me, <clears throat> the taste isn't there. It doesn't taste very good. I don't know what you guys think. Let me give it a sipperino. I mean, I think it's fine. It ta- to me. To me, it tastes like a watered down, not very flavorful IPA. I, mean, I don't. I don't think for it how good it, for how good it smells. I don't think it tastes like an IPA. I think it tastes like a pale ale. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's got like the finish and the aftertaste is very bitter, but the flavor that you get when you're drinking it is like almost non-existent. It tastes like water to me. <laughs> like. I don't know. It, it's meant to be like a session IPA, which I don't think is a real thing. I think they made that up. So, I mean, I, I get where you could drink this like all afternoon um, well, and it would be OK. To me, I feel like this but, would be a session IPA because it's yeah because of those reasons. Yeah. yeah. And this I, I agree 4. with that. 4%. But it mm. does. It doesn't. It doesn't taste good. Um, I do agree that it's definitely like if this is going to be classified as an IPA it's light on the IPA flavor um but i guess that is kind of if you're if you're going for a session beer that it's kind of something you're going for you're not looking for something super strong and heavy uh you won't want it all day it's only 4.4% so you could drink this all day and not die um well i mean depending on how much you drink during the day but we could drink this all day <laughs> not die yeah um, but if you've never drank beer before, don't drink it all day. <clears throat> you might die. Not really. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> um, so I don't know. It's okay for someone like me. Who's not super into the bitter. I don't mind it. Um, it's got, you know, the fruity flavors that I kind of expect and hoppy, but it's not like super hoppy. It's definitely like Rolanda said, more like a pale ale than an IPA. It's, I wouldn't really classify this as an IPA except for the fact that it clearly has hops that you can tell by the smell. <laughs> um, but yeah, I drink, mean, drink it, uh, drink it kind of for the aftertaste. The aftertaste is the, like the one saving grace for it. It's like, it's like a good hoppy floral IPA aftertaste and it's like pleasant. But the one thing I do like about it, it is, eh. is like that it doesn't leave that weird feeling on your tongue that some IPAs will because of like the, when they're super bitter, you get that kind of weird, yeah. like spiky feeling, but mm-hmm. it is pleasant afterwards. So for, in terms of a session beer, that is nice. But anyways, so we got a full day. Let's start with you, Drew. What do you, what, what are you going to give this beer? 
Um, just because they put IPA on the can, I'm going to rate it lower because it's it doesn't taste good to me like in terms of like the IPA flavors. Um, I don't know. I'll rate it like a 2.5 for me. It's just, it's, I mean, it's drinkable. It's not bad, but in terms of like complex flavors, something that I would go to again in the future, um, this is not something I would buy again. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a lower rating, go 2.5 uh, for this guy. All righty. What about you, Rolando? Um, I mean, I can see why you don't like it, but I don't necessarily think it's a bad beer. Uh, it's definitely not as bitter as you would expect from an IPA, but I do think if they're going to classify this as a session IPA, just the, the bitterness and the alcohol percentage makes it very easy to drink multiple of these. And I do actually like, um, the hops they're using in this. So while it's not very bitter and super in your face, like punching you in the mouth hoppy, I do like the combination of hops they're using in this because it kind of for as light as this beer is it it does have a pleasant aroma and aftertaste so i'm gonna give this like a 3.25 it's like a good beer to if you're not into ipas it's a good beer for you to drink but if you're into ipas it's not top tier but it is a decent beer to drink at a fairly cheap price. It's like it's like what you said. I'm like an I'm an IPA snob, so that's why I don't rate it as high. But you know, I'm curious to see you know what you think about it, Alec, because uh, you're not the biggest IPA kind of guy. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm actually uh, gonna rate this below Rolando and above Drew in the middle. Um, f- personally, so they're calling it like Rolando said. He uh, so. Um, meticulously stole most of my points <laughs> um uh for them calling it a session ipa i think they did a good job of achieving that goal it is not a high content it's not an overpowering flavor or bitterness and the aftertaste is pleasing like drew said and the mouthfeel of the like aftertaste isn't uncomfortable so you could have multiple of these and just like it kind of keeps you wanting to drink it um for me as not a big ipa fan i <clears throat> I do could see myself drinking it again. Um, I also was thinking it it reminded me of a beer we had a while ago. I can't remember. It was like Sierra Nevada or something, but this would be a good intro beer to IPAs because it has kind of that spark of hops and bitterness, but not to an extreme to just to kind of get your foot wet to see if you even like the flavor palette with like the citrus and the bitters. Um, But I don't think it's amazing. And me not being like big on these types of things, um, I'm not going to rate it too high just out of personal preference. But because they kind of reached their goal, in my opinion, I'm going to give it a three. And I think that's pretty generous on my end. (laughs) If you're going to drink a beginner IPA, drink the Sierra Nevada. The Sierra Nevada is much better flavor, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree. But um, so anyways, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our shows that are part of our weekly pairing um we have all of the season finales uh left over from last week besides soccer request because we did that <clears throat> um so let's go ahead and start with classroom of the elite um so rolando i know you have some things you want to talk about on this one why don't we start with you how what, w- what were your feelings about the finale of classroom of the elite um well it definitely turned out in a way that i didn't think was going to happen, which is good. But at the same time, um, it also is a bit more predictable in that in that way. Like we all know that Ayana Koji is going to solve everything. And as mm-hmm. the episode is happening, I was just like, like, I know it's going to happen. Like he's going to switch leaders and that's going to change everything. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what happened. And I'm just like, wow, that's just like. It makes sense, but it was just too predictable. Um, I did enjoy the fact that he was that, you know, like one step ahead, but we've been seeing that this whole season. So, you know, it was up and down. I don't know what you guys thought about that. It was it was more in like the way that he would come to the conclusion or like how he would 
do everything that we pretty much figured was going to happen. Like we knew he was more than likely going to switch leaders. Um, you know, we knew that uh, Class C had something up their sleeves in terms of uh, Ibuki and uh, their main leader and things like that. We knew something was going to happen with them. Um, and then in terms of Class A, um, B B doesn't even matter. B is just like this stable, you know, everybody feels good, big boob, uh, white haired chick leader, you know, whatever they're whatever. But There's then still a mystery behind have, prostitute girl. So and all a, a little bit, a little <laughs> bit. But uh, and then you, we have Class A with buff bald guy and girl with cane um, and their dynamic the character. And then. <laughs> and then they have uh, like the one guy who's like kind of um, in the middle between them and then coordinating with other classes. Um, uh, but in terms of getting there, you know, I, th- I felt it was fine. Um, like we said, it was kind of what we expected. Um, but at the end of the day, we kind of get a little bit of insight into Iona Kuji's character when, um, you know, uh, Harata comes up to him and says like, you know, I'm Sundere and, you know, I don't want to thank you, Baka, but, you know, you <laughs> kind of saved our class and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he's and just ignoring he, her. He, no, and then he, like, says to himself, like, I was never your friend, you stupid bitch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that ruthless. was the best. That was the best part of the episode. He's like, she's like trying to thank him, but she's Sundere, so she can't thank him. And oh, then he's like, I never thought of you. Yeah, she's standing there, like, friend. blushing and I thought you were talking about, I thought you were talking oh, about who Hirata, did I say? the class leader. No, no. Oh, I'm I'm <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> I was uh, just like, wow. Doing? I was just like, he's all sundry to him. And they're like, that's kind of funny way to look at it. <laughs> no, no. I I, I I meant her H names. You know, <laughs> we're, 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 we 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 we. You know, there. that was Susan a funny a. scene though, where Susan he's just a. ignoring her, talking shit on her in his head. In his head, and she's like, yeah. thank you, blah blah blah. Yeah, no, that was that was funny. The one thing I noticed though, when we were, when I was watching it is. Um, we were thinking it was either Ayano Koji or, um, crazy bitch with purple eyes when she goes nutso because oh, she's yeah. like scary inside. We were thinking it was one of them who's going to do a bunch of mm-hmm. shit. And then it turned mm-hmm. out to be the leader of class C. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, it makes perfect sense, but we didn't say it in the last episode. So kind of a, a twist there, but I'm then everything Ayano Koji that- did was... Exactly. I'm kind of like disappointed that she didn't have a bigger role because I, I felt like Rolando's theory was like way better than what they ended up actually doing because it With was the like class we seat. said. I think, yeah, I mean, like we said, it was pretty pre- pretty predictable. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think um, they were kind of trying to make it seem that way. And uh, I guess it's just like a red herring or whatever. But right. according to what I've seen people talk about, like, I guess, like, she is an issue with the class, like, later on, like, past what we've seen so far. So mm. I guess it's not out of her character to do something like that and betray the class. Right. I'd be interested to read it going forward. Yeah. Since it's not going to get another season. It's because probably not going everybody to. in Japan hated it. So yeah. unless unless all of our viewers and us go out and buy a whole bunch of copies of the Blu-rays and personally <laughs> fund this, oh, no. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, Japan by viewers, I mean listeners. It. Um, yeah. I, I did read up a bit on what some people on, on Reddit were saying about it. And apparently they just completely changed a bunch of characters, um, and gave all of that development to, uh, to Harikta. So right. basically she's not even supposed to be as big of a character as they made her out to be in the anime. Mm. And, um, it, the funnily enough, Karu Izawa, you know, like the, the g- girlfriend of Hirata, the class leader, is supposed to be mm-hmm. like one of the two current, like the female characters that has the most interaction with Ayana Koji, and the other being Ichinose oh, wow. from Class B. So, like, those two are oh, supposed really? to play a huge role. Um, and they're like non existent. And they're non existent in the anime. Like, Karuzawa wow. had like maybe five minutes of screen time total mm-hmm. throughout the whole series. Yeah, like the one scene where she's like, come hang out with us, Harikta. And she's like, no. And she's like, whatever. And then she's gone for like three episodes. Apparently, it's pretty <laughs> Don't dark. Don't steal my though. panties, bitch. Apparently, it's pretty <laughs> dark what happens to Karuzawa and how she ends up, you know, working with Ayana Koji. And then apparently, Harikta's almost. Uh. Um, it's always that. Yeah. But, um, and apparently Horikita is supposed to be fucking scared of Ayana Koji. Like she's supposed to be terrified uh-huh. of him. Like she's not like all the, well, like the, sh- the Sundara at the type, like at the end of 
what they right. showed us in this season. She's apparently like fucking terrified of him because hmm. he like because like cause she knows he's, he's using her, and uh, right. and he's just like super cold and stuff. So yeah. Well, and I, I feel like I feel like she should be, and like her character, even though they decided to go with her more than the other characters, her character is boring. Her character is a basic Sundre bitch who thinks she's smart and ends up being used. She's she's to me she's not a very good character. Uh Iona Kuji's a great character. He reminds me of kind of like a Danganronpa style character where like he yeah, maybe knows a little bit more and he he uses his extreme intellect or you know whatever his power happens to be um or whatever but he uses them to manipulate everybody else. Whereas Harita is just she's got a chip on her shoulder. Her brother's better than her and you know she's upset about it. But other than that, she's she's there to be used. Um, right. Other, she has no other redeeming character traits for me other than yeah. being like, I like Sundere girls. I'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, we're going to. I like Sundere. Run out of time. <laughs> if we get you start, I, uh, starting on Sundere girls. <laughs> no. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I like Sundere girls, but Harita is just she's just basic and boring. You can tell everything that she's going to say. You know, she gets sick and she's like, well, she's going to try to stick it out and then he's going to use her to do something. And that's exactly what happened. It's totally predictable. And and she's she's not even a romantic Sunday. Eh? Like, she's not good. Just get it. Get out of here. Give me give me other <laughs> so, character development. So with that like, said, then how do you how do you rate the show as a whole the whole this season? I uh, I rated it as an eight. Uh, it was entertaining, mm-hmm. and I like most of the characters, other than the one I just mentioned. Um, <laughs> I wish soccer. I wish Sakura got a little bit more screen time because um, I that think she's a cool. useful device. Uh, she got her one little tiny arc, but she's she's actually mm-hmm. a very useful device. Whereas Harita is just standard quo, uh, uh, par for the course, just sort to, of deal. Just to um, slightly interrupt you, apparently that is actually all that's covered for her in the light novel. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's all they I mean, gave I get her, it. creepy camera guy. Keep creepy camera guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and I and I mean I get it, but at the same time, that shows like how much she like how she's such a stronger character than Harita. Whereas I had more invested in her, this basic you know character, than I did in Harita. Like I don't know. Right. Eight, so, eight Rolando, for me. What'd you, eight for me. Eight for you, Rolando. What do you think? Yeah, I'm like at an eight. I, I did enjoy it. I'm an anime only mm-hmm. viewer. I haven't read the light novels, so there there was no reason for me to be mad until I finished it and then read about what the light novel actually was. And I was like, oh, you know what? I probably would have preferred if they animated that, but I mm-hmm. can't complain. Like, yeah. I did have enjoyment through it. There were some stuff like the ending, which I thought was pretty predictable. But, I mean, it is it is what it is. I, I do like... Um, Ayana Koji. I do agree that he's like uh, a very calm, collected main character. And mm-hmm. while he, it, like, we didn't really see his true character until like the very end, I do think that they didn't make him some typical harem main character little pussy bitch that like is just there to get <laughs> shit on by, by uh, everyone else and then like have yeah. some random shown in power you know yeah yeah i agree <laughs> he's got telekinesis or something out of nowhere <laughs> yeah. um i think this show is going to get an eight and eight across the board um i enjoyed it uh, obviously as an anime only uh viewer as well um i'd be interested since it's not going to get another season i'm interested to watch uh or read the light novels and kind of see what you're talking about uh, Rolando from when you were reading on Reddit. Uh, I agree. I like the main character. The only reason that it didn't get a higher score for, for me is it, like we said before, the show did feel kind of predictable in a lot of the things that happened. And if they, if it were a little more unpredictable, maybe it would have gotten like a you know, eight and a half or nine or whatever. So, but all in all, I enjoyed the show. We all seem to enjoy it I'll, for uh, what it was. I'll say too, um, as kind of a last note, um, this was one of the best animated series um, that we saw this season. In terms uh, of quality of really, animation, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was actually really well done um, in the style that they chose. So I applaud mm-hmm. them for that. It was it was very well done. Yeah, they were really consistent. I feel definitely, like. mm-hmm. definitely, hundred mm-hmm. percent. So with that, let's move on to our next one. We got new game! Exclamation! Exclamation! Um, 
this one, uh, I I personally uh, enjoyed the ending. It had good feels, and I think that it was kind of random with Momo and all that. But uh, uh, I I liked the feels that they kind of threw in the end. And uh, overall, I actually enjoyed the last episode. Um, we started with Rolando, so let's go with you, Drew. What do you think? I mean, you're the big Nanetche fan too, so <laughs> you're always vocal well, about it. <laughs> you, uh, I'll talk about Nanetche in a second, but you mentioned um, the developments with Momo, um, how you were kind of wishy-washy on it. I actually like that because it gave her character some depth. Um, she still has kind of her uh, vendetta against um, Alba, um, and it's kind of seen, you know, throughout. Uh, but it was good that she kind of vocalized, like, you know, Alba, like. We've gone through all this. Ko's leaving. She's going to France. You, you need to go and like say what you truly feel to her and thank her, you know, for the development that you've uh, received because of her. So I, I actually liked Momo because of that. Before that, like we talked about it in previous episodes where she kind of got a little bit of development and then she kind of fell off. Um <clears throat> But having her come in there and say, like, even though she's against Alba, it, she was kind of a team player in the, in the sense that she went to Alba and she's like, I know you're feeling more um, about, like, your idol. And she's my idol, too. You've been with her longer. You need to go and tell her how you feel. Um, so I felt that was really powerful for her character to be able to say that to her. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Alba does need to thank Ko. She kind of developed her and honed her uh, into filling her shoes, which is going to be a tough task. I don't know if it'll get another season. I hope it does. I, I love these, you know, I hope it kind of slice of life, um, mm-hmm. you know, good developments and things like that. It'll, it'll kind of be more of the same in terms of, you know, they're going to make a new game and we'll see what Ko's doing and everybody's doing uh, in that sense. But at the end of the day, it, it's a good happy go lucky anime. It makes you feel good when you watch it. It's not serious. Uh, it's just it's easy to know, watch when you're you watching it. dinner. It's exactly. <laughs> it's easy to watch. Not hard to follow. And you just you feel good after you're like you want all the characters to succeed you may like some more than the others uh but at the end of the day you know good mm-hmm. good quality show yeah and uh so, don't don't bully nanechi she is queen so what's your uh, rating for it i gave it an eight um animation okay. quality um as always mm-hmm. top notch for this uh this style of anime it's not super complex but you know they do an, an excellent mm-hmm. job with it um Super right. beautiful visuals, those pastel colors, uh, which is great for this type of show. Mm-hmm. Um, story, great. Um, doesn't try to do more than it, what it is. So, you know, a solid eight. Definitely enjoyable for me. Okay. Rolando, you got anything you want to say? Um, I think the only thing I'll touch on is that I enjoyed um, the actual reason for why Ko left. Um, so... That the fact that she wants to push herself more because Alba, like she saw Alba working so hard to try and catch up with her, she realized like, yeah. if I stay this way, mm-hmm. Alba's just gonna catch up and then surpass me. So I need to do something to push myself. So it's it's not just like a one horse race. Like both of them are actually competing against each other at their full strength, right? Definitely. And it also I gives that Alba, too. yeah, it gives Alba a reason to push herself to be even better right and it's not just like Mm -hmm. this kind of the royalty has handed down the crown to like the next generation it's like they did kind of give that kind of whatchamacallit um feeling by co introducing alba at the public event and then like them like promoting her as like a new up-and-comer like on the game box but um it it makes sense to have her leave for a while and then now we have Alba's struggle being like possibly the lead character designer for whatever next game the next game is right and then now she has Momo um, to push her um, while Ko is gone that's that's kind of what I was going to say too it's like you know Alba and Ko are now uh, or sorry Alba and Momo are now going to try to push themselves to be better uh, what I expect if they do another season um, is that uh, Ko is going to go to France and struggle and she's going to find working at kind of a bigger kind of studio where she's not the top dog and her opinions and art style and things like that are going to kind of get pushed down. Um, I expect her to fully struggle where kind of Alba and Momo push each other to be better. 
and they'll eventually come back together and make some sort of super project or something like that. Whereas, you know, Ko finally finds that, you know, she's not the top shit in fantasy RPG sort of uh, games. And she mm-hmm. needs to kind of open her mind, um, kind of like how Alba started to open her mind. She needs to totally open her mind, not only to like the Western culture of France and who are probably producing for the the world more so than Japan. She's going to be challenged in that way where Alba and Momo are going to push each other to just um, enhance their like basic styles mm-hmm. so that they can right. sort of reach Ko- Ko's levels. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rolando, what do you rate the, uh, uh, the show? I mean, I'm going to give I'm going to give this season maybe like a seven and a half. I I enjoyed it. There wasn't enough Hifumi in it. But I mean, <laughs> I it makes it makes sense because that's they're just following the comic. But mm-hmm. there there were there were some uh, there were some points where I was watching the season and I thought mm, this doesn't feel as strong as the first season. And uh, there were just some awkward parts like the whole thing with with Naru and her thing. It was just like. Momo was kind of shooed in because it's like you have to introduce the character because it's part of the story, but she's not really getting yeah. any development because there's not much development yet until Ko leaves, mm-hmm. right? So it's kind right. of awkward where it is and where it's ending. So I <clears throat> I can't really give it that much higher than like a seven and a half um, just because I felt like overall it felt like a weaker season than the first. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Um I, I agree with pretty much everything you guys said. Uh, um, I, I, my favorite part of the last episode, though, was when Alba called uh, Ko an asshole. <laughs> I oh, busted yeah. up when she was like, you're such an asshole. I just I died laughing. but And she's, of course, crying. But uh, I thought that was really funny. Um, all in all, and I agree that like Ko leaving and stating that she's like, <clears throat> I have to keep up with Alba is a it'll if that were like real that'd be a big motivator for alba and i think it would only make her like work harder than she already is but um all in all i liked this uh, this show as well to slightly interrupt you with you because you mentioned that and i um remembered something i did not like how they kind of shoehorned in that ko was originally gonna quit oh yeah yeah, i thought that was instead of quitting i thought that actually made the the whole impact of all of that worse I yeah, agree. it was I agree. a dumb little, little additive, unfortunately. Um, but uh, my rating for this one, I'm gonna go ahead, and I'll probably give it an eight as well. Um, I enjoyed it overall. It was a fun time. Um, but let's move on. Let's go ahead and go to gamers. Um, this show was funny the whole time. Uh, I don't think there was a. I don't. Uh, not that I remember. I don't remember any episodes where I was like, "God, this show just drags on." I just was always. There was always a point where I was laughing or something. But um, you know, uh, I I I enjoyed the show as a whole. I'll go ahead and go first this time, just because we're rotating. I don't know. <laughs> um, I liked the comedy. <clears throat> I liked the pacing of the comedy. They had a really good. They did a really good job of of pacing the jokes. Uh, not making them get old, like I said with before about like how Renai Bokun made their their jokes get old really fast. Um, and, and overall, I liked all the characters, um, even even Karen, despite the fact that they didn't give her really don't any. Don't hate Karen. I don't hate her. They just gave her nothing. They literally gave her no development, and I was like, Ugh. but um, all in all, they I really gave her enjoyed blonde, the show. Blonde hair and big boobs. That's all that matters. <laughs> Uh, all in all, I, I enjoyed the show. I'd give it an eight. The finale, um, I actually thought the finale was uh, pretty funny and a good kind of ending to the show. I hope it gets a second season. Um, I liked the way they were just <coughs> spamming, talking about uh, DLC and then <laughs> talking about people in DLC. I also like the comment uh, about what uh, Karen said in the bath about <laughs> enjoying pain. <laughs> oh, yeah. They got super but, um, meta in in that yeah (laughs) Yeah. super meta so i enjoyed it but uh what did you guys who wants to go first (laughs) i just got a very brief to say about it the the bath scene okay hand emoji we have karen talking about pain um naked naked standing Um, naked 
Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really like the last episode. It felt like kind of out of place, and they talked about DLC and what it means in a meta sense, like Rolando mentioned. Uh, for me, the show gets a seven. Uh, the reason why it gets a seven, and I'm I'm like on the fence between like six and seven, like in between there, just because the animation quality was not consistent throughout, and it was more mm. shitty than it was good. Uh, that's what kind of like lowers it to me, but I'm going to give it a seven because like it was like you said, Alec, it, there was never a point in the anime where I was like, this is boring. I don't want to watch it. Um, mm -hmm. They kept the jokes consistent. Um, they kept the themes consistent. Um, I do wish they would have given Karen a little bit more development. Um, I, I do think she's best girl. Um for all the things that I've mentioned before, but yeah, you know, it gets a seven for me. Last episode, not my favorite, but you know, consistent show. Good show. Right on. Rolando, what do you think? Yeah, this show's a seven for me. Um, I did enjoy it the whole time. There was there was not a point where I thought it was dragging on, like you said. But um, there are just parts that I wished were a bit better. Like I do, I have been saying like the past few episodes that I thought Karen needed more development. Um, they didn't give it to us, but I did accidentally spoil myself while reading Reddit comments on on stuff you do that a lot yeah but mm -hmm. well i mean like i finished this the series so i was just right. like trying to figure out like what people thought about it you know like light novel readers uh -huh. and um right she does get development later so i guess that makes sense why we didn't get it but i guess it was following the light novels up to like the second to last episode where they kind of deviated a little bit at the mus amusement park and then this last episode is like kind of just like anime original stuff but, um, yeah, it was enjoyable. I did find out that the author of this light novel series is the same author of um, Seto Kai no Ichizon, which um, I okay. thought that anime yeah. was really funny. And it did get a second season, despite being, you know, like a pretty much you're in what the like student council classroom This like, yeah, it's all about the 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 comedy of the jokes and the comedic timing. So now I understand why the humor writing in this show um, just worked. So I was like, oh, if it's the same author, then it makes sense. So I hope that makes it gets sense. I didn't, I didn't know that. So I didn't yeah. know that until I read about that. I was like, oh, well, and apparently Konoha goes to that school um, from Setokai no Ichizon. So uh, she's the student council president of that um, that school. Obviously, after those characters had graduated and and whatnot, but ah. it was just a little interesting. Cool. But yeah, seven solid. Yeah, cool. That's neat. Seven. Yeah. So we got a, a seven eight seven. Oh hey, that's a plane. Um. <laughs> anyways, let's move on to the last <laughs> show. This one, Drew and Rolanda watched. Um, I didn't watch this one. It's Kakeguri. So um, let's go ahead. Uh, Drew. Uh, yeah, Drew. Uh, what what do you uh, think about this show? Like, how'd you rate it? What do you think? Pretty predictable how it ended. I know kind of Rolando agrees with me on, on that point. Um, we had uh, a horoscope gambling game, which I felt was like a cop out. It wasn't very good. Um, and yeah, no it just shows that <laughs> that's what I was thinking the whole time. Um, but at, but at the end of the day, it was like it was so predictable. You knew they were going to tie like I knew like the second that it happened, like they were going to tie in the gamble that they made and they're just going to continue on uh, through their lives and whatnot. Um, it, it was a good run. I, I feel like their character design is like super excellent. They just didn't have enough episodes to elaborate on all the characters uh, you know, we got orgasming, um, one eyed bitch. We have, um, I mean, who else is unique? We have like, or like old school Japanese gambling bitch and idol bitch. You know, we, all the tropes are kind of, kind of there, but you know, when it, when it comes down to it, the ending just super, super predictable, uh, where, you know, the student council president, um, you know, ties, and it's, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm going to give it an eight. So, um, you know, not uh, not like ridiculously good, but definitely entertaining. Um, you always knew that, you know, someone was going to come out ahead gambling uh, by cheating or whatever happened to happen. 
but uh, you were just, you were there to kind of see how that happened. So I know I don't know average. Not like the animation was good. I, I did enjoy that. The music was also uh, very good. So very cool, Rolando. What do you think about that Kakeguri? Yeah, show I, that it, I didn't watch. <laughs> it's a it's an interesting show concept, and I do like the style of it. The characters were pretty interesting. Um, although if you you have to know that it's very over the top and fantastical if uh definitely if there was a so good word fantastic to uh describe it <laughs> um but it i i enjoyed it uh, it was very uh it was very entertaining and uh i'm gonna give it like a seven it it's enough to uh keep you interested and while it doesn't go very much anywhere at all plot wise um it it does leave um, an opening for a second season, which I hope it expands upon the the whole plot, because there's a lot of stuff that they left in there that was interesting. It's just that we didn't have any time to see any of it. It was just basically orgasming on fucking poker tables, like the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yep. The which which I'm okay with. Also, <laughs> side note, um, Netflix owns the rights to it, so that is probably a good thing in terms of it maybe getting a second season. Um, they were, you know, gambling on whether or not to fund it, and so if it's popular when it is simulcast on Netflix, I know Rolando and I probably had to watch it on the high seas. Um, but if it net if Netflix finds it popular, we can see maybe some funding for it, so it gets another season. So that would be that would be cool. I would definitely watch it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, from someone who hasn't watched it, uh, is it worth picking up and catching up for, even though we have all these other th- shows to watch? I would watch it. It's, uh, it's quick, it's quick and entertaining, um, mm-hmm. something new every week. And the characters, like I said, are very unique and you kind of want to know more about them. Mm-hmm. So I, I would recommend it. I, uh, right. you know, <clears throat> it's, you, you have to go into it knowing that it's very fantastical. It's very etchy. <laughs> um, but you know, definitely entertaining. Yeah, like cool. Yumiko is a very I'll strong female lead, and she's just—it's interesting definitely. how crazy she is. That's <laughs> how I'll put it. Right. All right. Like, so, like, I'll—I'll <clears throat> I'll go briefly. Like, part part of her character is that she's so unpredictable. Um, just she's driven by the fact that she is literally like sexually aroused by gambling. So take that as you will. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll, I'll probably check it out and make some space in our uh, in our repertoire going forward. But um, yeah, cool. Definitely, uh, definitely sounds like a fun show. So let's go ahead and move into our happy hour. We have a smorgasbord of <laughs> premieres that we have to talk about, and that word is uh, particularly fitting because we're going to start with Food Wars, which I just spent the entire last week. Catching yeah. up on seasons yeah. one and yeah. two and watch yeah. season three. I have not watched the OVAs, so, it's well, okay. fuck. But um, the show is great. It's fucking hilarious. Um, I don't I don't know. I don't have enough good things to say about it. It's just awesome. Do you, do you um, want to, like, give your your impressions of, like, very briefly of, like, yeah. the first few seasons? Like, what I'll run in through it really quickly. Yeah, um, I, I definitely think that it... <laughs> it's super like satirical on the typical like action you know it makes me laugh at like how i used to watch naruto and stuff and it's just like they'll have those moments where the the two rivals and i love how they'll have the cooking battle and one is uh, my favorite was the um the battle between fuck what's his name hayama akira and the fucking the other guy with the fire hat and one is an eagle and one's a tiger and they're both grabbing each other i'm like this is so ridiculous also, the fucking orgasms from the food are just hilarious and awesome. I'm just like, this makes the show where just people just becoming naked all of a sudden. Although I think the best one of all of them is when the the president or whatever of the school, he doesn't go bare chested from uh, what's her name? Pigtail girls <laughs> stuff. But then he's like walking down the hall and he's like, oh, and he's like, oh, my underwear is gone. <laughs> like. <laughs> He's like, I went bare without realizing it. I'm like, oh my god, this show is so stupid. But um, I absolutely love this show. I like almost all the characters. Um, I actually, I probably like all of them. I just find the the that main blonde girl. She just kind of annoys me. But um, Arena. 
Oh, I love, yeah. I love Arena, dude. Oh. <laughs> of course you do. Oh. Of course you do. Blonde, oh. big boobs. But um, Sundry. I, I Sundry, like I most of the characters. Um, I think best grill for me. Um, shoot, that's a hard one. Um, I'm trying to think of all that. The I like Meat Girl. I like Meat Girl. Um, Nico. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, her the the meat master. Sorry, meat general. After she, yeah. <laughs> after she has that her, one. Her episode. name is but, Mito. Um, <laughs> yeah, Mito. Uh, <laughs> Mi- Mito, the meat general. Mito. But um, yeah, with her with her fucking United States flag bikini, dude. Yeah, or the fire <laughs> one. in the U.S. or the those fire boobs. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she's probably my favorite. Um, I would like the beer girl. Because she seems like she'd be cool, but she has, like, absolutely no development. Oh, yeah. Real she's just kind of there. Yeah. yeah she she's, seems like she'd be yeah. a good character, but she's just there. Um, Megumi, is that yeah. the blue-haired? Yeah. yeah. I think she's cool, mm-hmm. but she's just kind of, like, she. she's that kind of normal, like, quiet character, but she's a little boring for me. And then there was his friend back home who was similar to her. Also, she felt really flat to me. Oh, I, I don't think she was character. meant to be anything. Yeah, I don't think she was meant She's to be very exciting. <laughs> but she was like super flat. Um, trying to remember, pigtail it's, girl, the girl who has the peanut, buns, peanut butter tentacles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Along with uh, Megumi, who gets the honey tentacles, um, and that pigtail girls, the one who's always super hyper. She's just loud, and then Yuki is just. Yeah, I'm like, Yuki. be quiet. Um, Sit down. Um, sit, sit down. Be <laughs> humble. Secretary girl. She's not bad. She's getting better for me at the end of season two with the, uh, with the, um, <clears throat> the 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 thing they did at the restaurants. She got better for me. But all in all, I like. The, anyways, I like all the characters. So, and then we have season three starting. Uh, what do you guys think of the first episode? Drew. <laughs> go <laughs> true um it, it, i mean it was a good episode it set up kind of uh, what's going to be going on they have mm-hmm. like the school fall festival the moon what do they call it like the moon festival or something yeah, like that i believe it's the moon festival. um we get we get the first uh kind of conflict of the season it's it's more it's this anime is great because it's satire of like school tournaments or like tournament anime um where we get like one big like conflict that's going on right now it's the you know fall festival where if uh, your booth doesn't sell enough food, you get expelled. They love expelling people at the school, yeah, if you lose, uh, which is awesome. The game. <laughs> I just lost. Uh, we get uh, we get the uh, one of the uh, top eight uh, elite eight uh, students, Kuga. He's like this, like what is it, Szechuan province of China, spicy food yeah. uh, expert. He's he's, he's food food so good, in Szechuan cuisine. Yeah, his food looks fucking dope. It looked dope. By the way, so side side note, we're I want to do an episode of Anime on Draft this season where I cook like yeah. one of the dishes. So we're gonna need to get together and like film me cooking the dishes and you guys like either getting tentacle rapes or just like um, I don't know so about I'm not getting tentacle. <laughs> I don't know about getting tentacle raped. <laughs> I'm not getting tentacle raped. But I'll judge it. We can judge it. Show show you uh, show. Oh my god, Shoku I can't talk right Shoku Shoku Geki style. Geki style. We can judge it like yeah. that and say how bad your food we're gonna, is. We're going to do yourself. it. We're, we're going to well, do no, it. I'm going to spend if it's a, it, Shokugeki, like a lot of money on this. He has we're to be do competing it. against somebody. Yeah, we'll just we'll need to get multiple people who we'll don't mind out. being on camera. But anyway, I'll be tasty. Look, look forward to that. It's going to be tonight. Um, oh, God. Anyway, so we have uh, Kuga and uh, uh, Solmuk are the, the main conflict. They're going to be kind of going at it. And uh, Kuga kind of says, you know, hey, if you can outsell me, I will give you a Shokugeki and we'll throw down. And if you beat me, you know, you're going to be part of the Elite Eight. So or the Elite Ten, excuse me. Elite Ten. So that's kind <laughs> the, of our conflict. The Elite, eight. Uh, the elite eight. The NCAA. <laughs> Come the on. Elite Four. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, we, we, we get the conflict started. Uh, Soma being the cocky asshole that he is, he's like, I'm going to set up my tent, you know, right outside of uh, your tent. I'm going to try to steal your customers uh, with my, quote, Chinese food. So he's going to cook Chinese food against the Chinese food master, which is totally, you know, Soma's prerogative, just like challenging people at what they're good at. It's because uh, he's used fail, to challenging you know, it, his dad, who's a god at everything. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, you know, we, we see him fail in, uh, in the last season, so hopefully he can, you know, pick up the W mm-hmm. uh, and we get that big Shokugeki <laughs> to try to get him into the, uh, the Elite Ten. So starting off strong, I like you said, Alec, I love all the characters. Your waifu is wrong. Um, Alice is actually the best waifu. Um, That's debatable. But anyway, what do you think of it? Well, I mean, what do you, who who's your waifu, Rolando? Who who's your pick? I don't know. If you if you say Ar- Ar- Arena, she she's top she's top two. She's top two. I mean, me. like I like her character, but like the introduction of Rindo kind of makes it a little bit difficult. Oh, um, oh, especially that's because, that's the other one. Especially dude. because that's, that's the other one. Especially Which because one is she? she's um, voiced by Ito Shizuka and she always voices like the mm-hmm. very like flirty um, like Which types of though? characters and like that's just like a really um, like for me like I've like seen a lot of anime where her character does that and it's like I usually tend to like those characters in the anime too so yeah I guess it's kind Who of like a she? residual. She's uh she's the cat looking girl with the uh, fang who's talking to the number one. She's, she's number two, two in the Elite Eight with the uh, oh. the red hair and the cat eyes. That one. She's she's God tier. She there's there's three girls that are God tier. Arena, Rindo, and Alice. Um all God tier right there. I mean Alice is is like I thought it was between Arena and Alice in the second season. But I like uh, Alice. With a... Uh, with the emergence of Arena's character in this season, because like now she's actually having more like of a role other than just being a smug, smug ass bitch in the background. Um, yeah, yeah. She, you know. But um, I also do like Ryoko, even though she doesn't have any character development. It's probably just because of is she character malt design. Bitch? Yeah, beer bitch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number she, two, she, she is Alice. Character design for number sure. two for me is for sure Alice. It's a uh, meat girl, Alice, and then um, I would probably have to agree with the mall girl. I just like her. She's just a good character, mm-hmm. even though she has yeah, nothing. She has nothing. Like no character development. She's literally just like she she's makes there. beer and like if she were but a real person, beer. she'd make beer and she's hot. I'm like, damn, that's like, yeah. woo. So that's <laughs> like, okay, to, Andy to, to your uh, <laughs> that's the thing. to your uh, to your testament though, Alec. Like at the beginning, it's like all the characters in the show. Like even if the ones that don't have like good de- like personal character development, they're all like drawn very well and they all have mm-hmm. their own personalities. So they're they're mm-hmm. all like good characters. That's what makes all- the show like great. I agree. Yeah, you could easily find like a reason for one to be top over another because of mm-hmm. a bunch of different reasons. <clears throat> so I definitely agree. Definitely. But and the good new season, the season is is definitely a good start. So let's move on. Let's go ahead and start uh, going to recovery of MMO junkie. Um I know all three of us watch this. I know all three of us have played MMOs. I know all three of us know yes. the yes. <laughs> the randomness of being like hmm, this person <laughs> you know that like when you're when you're in World of Warcraft and you're standing in some town and there's some blood elf with no clothes on, you know that's some fat dude <laughs> behind a keyboard just like Rapping. and and then well, I mean, the to be, to be fair, I only them. play, <laughs> I only play female characters in MMOs. So. <laughs> but you don't go stand in a town kind of naked, a, so <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> but um, yeah. So it, it was really fun. It's funny that the show started out with this neat woman creating a character, and she's like, "All right, my hot guy character is done." And then we we find out that the person who's like helping him completely is. A dude. a dude and i just find it funny that there's this kind of like ultra role reversal of their characters in the game but then when you go out of it she's like oh my god i don't know what to say <laughs> yeah, the, it's the, just really funny the other thing about it is like <laughs> what does that really say about them because it's like they're like oh man she's like oh this character is so cute and then he's like <laughs> right? helping this dude character because he's a yeah. girl character it's like so it'll never work you, out because he's gay it, and she's mentally a are you straight <laughs> <laughs> or I'm confused, like, because, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of funny. It's Japan, they're all straight. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's it's very it's, it's very predictable. Funny. It's very predictable, though, right? Like, even before, like, they introduced the male character, we knew that chick was a dude, like, oh, let's yeah. be real. <laughs> mm-hmm. So obvious. Um, 100%. So, so like it's, it's super predictable for this anime, but it, it was entertaining. The one thing that I did not like about this anime, the animation quality is shit on episode one. So I do not know what to expect okay. on the later so episodes. I I did preference uh, preface this show 
with you guys. I said the first episode was interesting, but the animation may throw you off. But I think so yeah. there's for sure a certain anima- animation mm-hmm. style to it that is different. But also I feel like the animation is a lot closer to early early 2000s anime compared to Ow. current anime. And um, what it's I did good. notice, though, is that every the f- the flow of the animation is actually a bit better than a lot of the shows that we get today. So a lot of shows I mean, it's, use it's... CG and all of that to help with, you know, getting deadlines faster mm-hmm. and then they outsource stuff to different places to and then you get that's where you get these weird like uh keyframes and like in between animation mm-hmm. whereas like this show i felt was very consistent in its style despite it looking that's what like i was gonna say it's it's anime. exactly that's what i was gonna say it's consistent for what it is i'm just hoping that it keeps <clears throat> like this is episode one I hope it keeps this quality uh, going forward. Um, if it is going to, you know, be this kind of style, I just hope it doesn't deteriorate. Um, it looks like Pokemon. But I yeah, hope it keeps yeah. the quality of the jokes they've had so far. Like when she's in the store and she's saying, um, I have to get out of here. She's like, all oh, these couples. And she's like <laughs> throwing food in her basket. Like all oh, these couples are out just because it's Christmas. I got to get out of here or I'll die. And I was like busting up. But um, I, I'm excited for this show, actually. I think I'll, I'll definitely keep watching it um, and it'll be a, a fun one to watch. But let's go ahead because uh, we're going to run out of time. Let's move on to uh, Emoto Sai Ereba I. I. Uh, Rolando, e. you said you uh, checked that one out. What do you think? E. Yeah, e- so this one's e- Emoto Sai Iraba E, which is basically e- like, if only he had like, or like fits for the main character. It's like, if only he had a little sister, it'd be good or whatever, like be fine. <laughs> um, this one is basically the way I described it in my notes was this show is um, an act- a, a more entertaining Aromanga Sensei and there's no incest in it, which makes it, a billion times Ooh, better. Nice. So, um, <laughs> sick. Yeah. Uh, I actually almost turned it off during the first minute because it was you could walk very, up and downstairs. It was very cringy. I was like, what the fuck is this? And then you find out, Oh, this is this, this really shit manuscript that this dude wrote for as like a, you know, um, as a proposition for like a light novel he wants to start. And then They're his editor just starts yelling at him. To, <laughs> uh, he's just like, this is fucking shit. And like a quote that I wrote down was, <laughs> stop thinking some crazy psychopath setting where people lay eggs and eat panties is along the same lines as cliche battle manga settings. And I was just like, <laughs> oh shit. That was really fucking funny. But like I almost turned it off during that <laughs> beginning part because I thought, I was like, what is this shit? This is weird. And then this- it turns out to be like this, like they're animating his shit story or whatever. And it was pretty funny. Uh, it's a silver link show. So, um, uh, you know, re zero, all that. Um, they mm-hmm, did, yeah. did that. And I always tend to think for some reason that silver link shows are made by JC <laughs> staff just because the animation tends to be a bit similar. Um, and also the, well, it's good quality. and also the content of the shows tend to be similar too. um, there there's like a trap character which is his younger brother but this dude is like so he's an author like an arrow manga but he's really obsessed with the little sister characters he doesn't have one he has a younger brother that's a trap um and then uh, and then he's got this like younger um kohai character that really is fucking thirsty for him and he's just like you're not a little sister so i'm gonna not you know go on your advances but like we find out you know through the ending sequence that he probably is just not gonna try to answer her feelings until he improves his writing because like he was emotionally whatchamacallit um moved by the story she wrote on her debut or something and i guess like i think she's one of his editors i don't know but She's also an aspiring author and she's just like really thirsty for him. They do a lot of random references. Like they reference Kobato from Haganai, Drew, which you'll probably enjoy. Ugh. Um, and then uh, what's Ugh. his name? Hachiman's younger sister from Snafu. 
because he this dude just loves uh, <laughs> fucking younger crap. sisters. He loves snafu. Um, uh, and then they did drink beer, which I thought was pretty interesting in this episode. They drank a, what they described in the eye catch as a Kokuto sweet stout, 6.5% ABV, guys. We'll have to find right. out if that's a real beer. We'll have to find one. Yeah, we'll have to find it if it's real. <laughs> yeah. I think, Would you recommend uh, Drew and I picking it up? Yeah, I, I think you guys sh- should watch the first episode just to see what it's about. It's definitely mm-hmm. better than Aramanga Sensei already. That's not hard to do. Yeah, I like, <laughs> I like, I like Emoto anime, so I'll, yeah. probably, I'll probably watch oh, it. Oh, yeah. The dude also wants Kirino to abuse him, so he's a little bit similar to you. <laughs> Oh, this is perfect. Well, yeah. <laughs> At least two of us relate. are going to be watching it. Oh, and that thirsty chick was relate. sniffing the dude's boxers, so that was kind of weird. But <laughs> All right, so the with scent that, of, the scent sniffing of a young boxers, <laughs> let's go ahead and move on to King's Game. Pants uh, eating and boxer I'm... sniffing. <laughs> God. <laughs> so I know I know Drew you watched this. Uh what what were your thoughts on the first episode of King's Game? So it's like a like a another corpse party, right? Like Ooh. this game, this this show is like ridiculous. Uh, the thing that it the thing ridiculous. that pissed me off the most, uh, the thing that pissed me off the most. So like basically, there's this unknown entity which is the king, and he sets these rules to this game. Random whereas rules. if you don't follow the rules, you you die. So kind of like a mix of corpse party and um, Danganronpa. But basically, the class um, needs to follow these rules. Uh, the main character has played the King's Game before, and he was the only one to live from it. And of course, in classic anime sense, nobody believes him when he comes in and is like, you need to follow these rules, you stupid idiots, or we're all going to die. <laughs> and he's willing to like die and sacrifice himself so that like, and maybe the other they can live or like... Yeah, and like maybe that they can see that like this is actually legit. But they're like, you just wanted to make out with this girl. Like, why don't you just confess your true feelings? And he's like, I've been crying this whole episode. Like, you right. can't see that. Like, I'm an, <laughs> yeah. an like an emotionally like, just disturbed leave me alone. person. Um, so people end up dying. Um, we have hmm. the rules to the game, which are again, the rules are super um, unfair. You receive it. Super. You receive the first a text rule. message. Oh my God. So unfair. You receive a text message. The first rule that we saw was the main character needs to kiss um, another one oh. of the girls in his class, his and high school class. Kills and <laughs> and if they don't obey this, they're going to die. So eventually, and going very quickly, they end up kissing, uh, but it happens at midnight. And so right after that, the next D. rule comes out. She does want his D. But eventually, the next rule comes out right after they kiss at midnight, and it was like, no one can fall asleep or they will die. And it's yeah, like, it said, no well, one if you would have taken care of this sleep. during... <clears throat> yeah, so if 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 they would have taken care of this during the day, like, everybody wanted them, or, like, where the, the girl wanted it, like, it, people and wouldn't have friend, died. But and, they like, lost. the whole class was like, do it. They they literally lost half the class mm-hmm. because they were already asleep already. So mm-hmm. basically follow the rules that the text message send or you die. Yep. Um, it was extremely brutal, extremely gory. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if it's going to be an awesome thing, anime. Don't watch it. Yeah, don't don't watch it if you don't like gruesome anime. Yeah. Um, like the one the, thing that I didn't like. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Uh, the people who were asleep got hung. The dude who I forget, they never said what he got punished for, but he basically got like a thousand cuts and then exploded and bled to death. Uh, it's it's yeah. gruesome. And then at the very beginning of the anime, some girl gets all her limbs cut off. So mm, it's yep. gruesome. Like yep. if you, if you liked the anime Gantz or Gantz, whatever, you would like this anime. It reminds me a lot of that in terms of like uh, uh, just a lot of factors. Um, but go ahead, continue what you're saying. Um, a couple things in closing. I hate the main character because he looks exactly like the character from uh, DXD, and he just looks like a generic um, harem anime protagonist, which was very disappointing. But the thing I did like the opening song is like metal and like screamo, and was really awesome. So if you like that kind of thing, it was it was really good. But the op- I like this anime, Rolando. I recommend really watching it. Premise sounds uh, very generic though. Because I've seen a bunch of shows. That it it is it is very generic, but it it is. Yeah, I like the main girl Honda. She seems cool. Yeah, she's but cool. um, it it's uh, the OP. I agree, it was good. I don't watch OPs, but I liked this one. I watched the first OP of every episode that I watch, and then that's it. But uh, anyway, so 
uh, in the, in the uh, spirit of time. I don't know. Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> uh, so, Rolando, you watched Love Live Sunshine Season 2. Yep. And you had some good opinions about it, saying it's very meme Yeah. Go ahead. As usual, Love Live, a very meme-worthy show. A lot of <laughs> memes will become coming from this uh, season. I just already see it. So the best way to describe this show is it tries to be very Disney-esque in terms of trying to be, like, fantastic. But the main issue is, like, the writing isn't great. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's... Uh, that's the, th- the thing is, like, you go into it knowing this and expecting it. So it's, like, they try to be Disney fantastical and have all this, like, musical and, like kind of show theater kind of shit but at the same time you just kind of laugh at it and it's like it's entertaining in my opinion I I enjoy watching it just because I can have a good laugh at it um and I don't I don't I like to think that it's not taking itself seriously if it is like then you know whoever like the staff then well I I feel sorry for you (laughs) um (laughs) but uh it the the other Disney ish side to it is like they always like reference like try to make it seem like a miracle is going to happen because they like throw this contrived drama into it (laughs) and then like some miracle is supposed to happen and like as i was writing that down in my notes they like each character said miracle like they just like they were saying kiseki which is like miracle in japanese and it's like oh my god like literally what i'm just typing right now they are saying it in the actual show which itself (laughs) is like a fucking meme but yeah, it was pretty pretty funny. Um, the opening song and ending are good. I still think the first season's ending was better, but I kind of like the second season's opening better. Um, in general, they're, the CG is way better, especially when you compare it to the very first season of the original Love Live with Muse. Um, but I do think that the story in the original Love Live was a bit better. Um, although... Uh, I kind of get how it's kind of just me, me now. So yeah, that's what I wanted to add. It's like, I love live, you know, it is what it is. I, I like love live um, to some extent. I wish the animation quality, cause the animation quality is very good. I wish it was used on something else. Um, Cause well, love live at the end of the day is memes. But the All CG quality is, is always better. on memes. The CG animation they're using is getting way better. Um, it's not like the level of idol master, but it's, um, it yeah. like when they do show like the dancing or whatever, they've only showed that in the opening, but, uh, that, that stuff is way improved. Like if you watch the first series, you're just like, what the fuck is this CG animation? And th- that was like at the time, yeah, snow, ho- snow, halation, snow, halation and CG makes me want that, that was at the time when the a lot of the animes started getting Japanese C, like the the CG in Japanese anime started like becoming prevalent and it was super noticeable and it wasn't until like a few mm-hmm. a couple years after that where it started becoming <clears throat> less noticeable or whatever yeah. yeah so well I'm looking forward to the memes that you're going to be throwing our way from the show um, but you also said you watched just because right oh yes um, Go ahead and uh, that talk about that one. That show, I actually, um, I wrote in my notes that I was so enthralled by the episode, I forgot to write notes. Um, oh, wow. So it's good. Um, it's promising. It's like a romance show. Um, so I don't know if that's going to interest either of you. I know I'm the old Asian woman romance in this, in in this group. Yeah. So um, it's, uh, it's more going to be drama romance side. Um I know our friend Would Mark you, is going to be watching it because he watches those types of shows too. But what is it akin to? Akin to? Um, yeah, like what's it similar to? I guess. I would say, huh? What <clears throat> romance show? Because I feel like I have a pretty spread out variety of shows that I've watched in the past uh, since I've started watching anime. Um, so I don't know. I would be willing to check it out, but. I'm trying if to think good. of of like a romance show that it would be akin to. It like mm-hmm. right now the only romance show that I can that's popping into my head right now because we talked about it a f- 
couple of weeks ago was True Tears, but this is not like True Tears um, uh, whatsoever. Um, it's <clears throat> it it's um, for me it it feels like uh, it feels like a uh, somewhat similar to what is it Anohana or whatever but it's not going to have all that drama and shit into it and like death and all that shit. Um, uh, but the, I, the style feels similar, like the writing style. Um, it, it definitely isn't your typical romance show where they try to introduce a shit ton of drama in the beginning. That's like typical of like shoujo romance, but um, it just kind of puts you into the setting of what's going to happen and then alludes to something some of the conflicts that could have occurred like throughout the show. So I think it looks good from the first episode. It doesn't give you too much, but at the same time, it doesn't bore you. It gives you just enough. Yeah. To get you interested. Very cool. Um, So promising and tasty is going to be watching it. Yeah. So uh, we somewhat respect tasty's opinion, Um, (laughs) (laughs) but uh, I'll move on. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about Ancient Majesty's Bride for a second. The first episode came out. Um, I kept talking about the three episodes that came out. They were kind of teaser episodes. It was it, it was like a prologue sort of about the uh, main girl's like life before the where where she is now. But um, I did read the first um, light novel. The first uh, uh, what is it called? you know, uh, first volume of the light novel or whatever. And the anime follows it pretty, like it's almost exact. Um, and I liked the first volume. It was really good. Um, the first episode was really good. They had really good humor thrown in there. The way they animated, like the main, uh, mage guy, uh, just kind of, it made me chuckle at times. And so it was really, I, I think they did a really good job. Um, I'm actually really excited for this. Um, and then, so I suggest everyone checks it out, but, um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Cause I've talked about it for like the past four episodes. So let's go ahead and have Rolando and I talk about black clover. Um, Rolando, you check this one out, right? Yes. What did you think of it? Um, main character is just yelling the whole time, which, you know, gets on. Oh my God. Gets on <laughs> it nerves. gets on your nerves. He's just, <laughs> Yeah. I was and like, please stop like, yelling, dude. There's like three times he doesn't yell, and it's because he's like beaten to a pulp. <laughs> yeah, because like, he's sad. I was just I'm thinking, like, God, like can you just shut the fuck up? Like, stop yelling. I just t- talk. Like, what's <laughs> wrong with you? They're right in front of me, bro. <laughs> like, relax. Like, I. So irritating. I, I thought the premise was interesting, and I'm going to watch the next couple episodes because mm-hmm. it's like, it, it's like, it's decent for Shonen. But, um, I do like the art style to it. It just reminds me of like a lot of other different shonen anime, kind of like uh, uh, Seven Deadly Sins and that kind of stuff. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, it does definitely remind me of Seven Deadly Sins. There were funny parts. Um, the main character is kind of a little shit, and then it, of course, Kinda. because he's such a little <laughs> shit and sucks so much, he has like some fucking god power that like appears before him like that was pretty he gets obvious. the <laughs> five was leaf just, clover yeah was I was just, just like, like when is his power when is his power so, going? he's gonna uh, blow up the world when is it gonna come and, so yeah. i won't be watching this <laughs> well it's magic so of course you won't yeah, you don't like anything shown in magic that kind of kind of shit so you're not gonna like this show it does remind me of uh, the art style. You hit it nail on the head for me. It reminds me of Seven Deadly Sins. I was trying to think of what it reminds me of, and it really does remind me of that. But I think I'm still going to like Seven Deadly Sins a oh, little better than I'm going to like this. Because like Seven Deadly better. Sins is great. Yeah. So to, be fair, I, so to be fair, so I, I, I do like magic. I like Trinity Seven form. Yeah, you of like magic. harem. Like, I'll watch shows like that. Yeah, you like yeah. boobs. Harem magic. Blondes. Hera, Hera magic. Did, did you, oh, we don't have time. Let's talk about 2027. <laughs> so, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to check out the next few episodes of this one as well. Um, I'm, I, my opinions pretty much line up with yours on this one, uh, Rolando, but, uh, let's go ahead and move on in the interest of time. Uh, you had another two shows that you watched DS E-Ray, right? Oh yeah. And, uh, Konohana Kitan. Yeah. I'll briefly touch these two. Um, DS uh, Ire uh, is basically their like alternate 
World War II time history. Although what I didn't realize as I was writing my notes was that I was watching episode zero. <laughs> so I was like, why haven't any of the people that are supposed to be the main characters shown up in this episode? They're showing like these Nazi vampire people things. And it's like, this is weird. Like, is this a show about the villains? Like, I don't want to watch a show about Nazi vampires. And then um, I see like, what? oh, this is episode zero. That's why none of the people that were like labeled as main characters, like on my anime list, did, did not fucking show up. And so I guess they're using it to kind of <laughs> lay the foundation for who the bad guys are. And uh. it's, uh, I mean, it was like kind of all over the place in the first episode. And <clears throat> I kind of felt like it was trying to be similar to Fate, like the Fate series, but just not as good. Uh, so I'm probably going to watch the first episode and then give my judgments for that there. But otherwise, it's just, just like it's just vampire Nazis. Um, and it's just <laughs> weird. Um, and then uh, Konohana Kitan is like slice of life with random fox grills. Um, it was just like, all right, well, that's that. Uh, whatever. It's not very good. Mm. that's why I didn't watch it. I, I felt like it was going to be like that. <laughs> so you're not going to continue with that one. I'm assuming. I don't know. It, it's like if I Maybe. need a show to watch, um, while like trying to fall asleep and that's probably going to be the show. So definitely not something to cover on the show then. No. All right. Um, so the last show we have in store today is love is like a cocktail. And it's definitely, it's one of those short shows. Well, the first episode is going to be like this the whole season, right? Yeah. The first episode yeah, was three, three minutes. minutes. There's no way it can be longer than <clears throat> yeah. that to no. No. keep no, no, anyone no, no. interested in it. I actually enjoyed the first episode. It was kind of random. And you guys know me and my love of just cocktails in general. Um, I like making cocktails. I like looking up new cocktails. I have at least like four books filled with just, it's like cocktails and how to make them. Um, it's just something I like to do, even though I don't ever do it. Uh, um, but, uh, so I actually like this one because she's like at work and the girl's like, Hey, I'll treat you to a nice cocktail. And she's like, no. And then she goes home and her husband is like, here's a cocktail. And then they like flash in the center in the middle of the episode. Like, this is how you make it. And I was like, that's awesome. That alone, that little middle screen t saying mix these things equal parts or whatever yeah. sold me on the, yeah. on the series. I'm like, I'm going to watch this entire series. And like, if one of so, these strikes my fancies, I'm taking notes. So what I was thinking is like when we do our food wars, like, uh, <clears throat> cooking episode, we'll, we'll have to do a cocktail from uh, this show too. And that would be, yeah, I was thinking we need to incorporate kind of, kind of fitting. Well, I don't know. Cause if we all the like cocktails. Um, you need to get show two. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a little, yeah, I mean, a little difficult. But we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out if, they, if there's a if there's a cocktail that we can do. And uh, one the, of these, the one thing was... that, th go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, like the the one thing that I was like hilarious about the show is like all this husband is doing is getting his wife drunk so that she'll be nice to him. <laughs> like <laughs> she's he's getting her drunk so that like she he can like seduce her or like they can like go bang later. Like that was that was the premise of the anime for I, me. <laughs> I don't know if you're giving it like the exact proper description with that because that makes it sound <laughs> very wrong. Um, it makes it sound like he married his wife because he, he got her he drunk. Definitely I mean, it's, it's wholehearted. But. He definitely gives her, gets, tries to get her drunk because he thinks she's a lot cuter when she's drunk, but not he's doing it because she's a bitch. <laughs> no, 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 not. I, I didn't mean it like that. Like, I don't mean that she's a bitch. He he wants to get her drunk so that he could like bang her. Like All she's right. like you're, fine you're still when she's making it sound her. like a very <laughs> no 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 like so she's she's like she's like a normal person when she's not to, but like when she's super drunk she's like super flirty she's like. She's like, he's like, hey, do you want me to come sit next to you? And then he and then she's like all over him, like grabbing his arm and like, make me another drink. And it's like it was like kind of lecherous to me. Okay. <laughs> it's not supposed to be like that. But that was what I was thinking. Okay, Because like the first the way you initially described it made it seem like he was trying to rape her. <laughs> well, no, he's trying to get her drunk so that he can bang right. her. It's like, uh, I don't know if we're talking what? about the show correctly. <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> all in all, for a three minute show, looks like a lot of fun. Something that I can tune in for each week or yeah. 
and the way the way, the way I described it break. to Drew was break. it's got a blonde girl with big boobs and she's drunk, so it's your right up your alley. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. I definitely Perfect. think that Thank if one of these weeks they make a cocktail that's just like we're like, holy crap, that's aw- that sounds awesome. We should make it our instead of having a beer, we have that. At oh, the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and I we can think that would be a cool about, idea. Talk about it briefly too. Yeah. You know. So yeah. but uh with that, we actually made it through all of our shows in the time frame we allowed. Woo-hoo. Um, so <laughs> I'm just going to throw out our regular, normal closing remarks. Uh, if you want more of us, check us out on anime on draft.wordpress.com. From there, you can subscribe to us on iTunes. You can get access to our, well, not really access. You can find links or like video in embeds to our SoundCloud and our YouTube. Um, that'll have all the episodes going back to episode one. We are now on episode 26, which I forgot to mention. This is episode 26, unless I did. And I forgot. Um, you did. We also have our Twitter at anime on draft. You can get news about the episodes being released. Um, or like last week our us po- postponing the episode, which we did this week. And that's why it's so crazy. Um, we also have an Instagram that we don't use, so I'm not going to mention it. Uh, <laughs> Um, and then besides did. that, I think that's, that's all we got. Um, we made it, we made it, we made it. I'm surprised that we didn't go way longer than we did. So, uh, well, and, uh, any, any of the shows too, that you're kind of interested, uh, for this season that we talked about that we didn't go like more in depth on, uh, we'll probably talk about them a little bit more in depth, uh, next week. So, yeah. And if there's one you specifically want to hear like more in depth on that we touched on here or that maybe we didn't touch on, mention it in the comments on YouTube, SoundCloud or just email us on our, our contact, WordPress and WordPress, yeah. and yeah, and our contact page. If you go to WordPress, hit hit contacts, us up on the DM. You can email us there, yeah. And uh, we'll we'll definitely make some time to go more in depth on on that if you want to hear that from us. But uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end this episode number 26. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good night. Bye bye. This is like the Bud Light of IPAs. Yeah, that, that's a good way to describe. <laughs> it's, really, it's really <laughs> easy to drink. <laughs> Except, but it luckily, it tastes, tastes better than Bud Light. Actually, it does taste better than. Bud I would Light, drink this over Bud Light any day of the week. <laughs>